ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. And in this video, we're going to have a quick look at this here radio, the FR Sky X20 HD. Horus, maybe. And so, this is an HD version. It might have well been about a non HD version. In this video, we're going to add ELRS functionality to this radio. You probably know that this radio doesn't speak ELRS right out of the box, but it's pretty simple to add ELRS to it. Also, it might not be super apparent if you get this radio and you want to add ELRS to it. It's not in the manual and such. Obviously, right? Eversky doesn't really want you to get into ELRS. But if you have this radio, you probably do want to at least try ELRS. And in this video we're going to add this here a module to it. And it doesn't really matter which module you add, uh, but uh, well this one is actually pretty small. This is a happy model, 500 milliwatt ELRS module and it fits well. And at the end of the video I'll also show you how to add bigger modules to radios like this. However, the trick is in the firmware. Let's have a look what you need to do to make this combination here work. <laughs> you serious? So, the first thing we actually want to do is make sure that the firmware on our radio, so the ETOS firmware, right, the operating system of our radio, is up to date, is the latest version. In fact, that'll add uh, some of the uh, logic of ELRS that ELRS needs, or even uh, Crossfire needs, to the radio. So, um, on our computer, we start the ETOS suit, and if you don't have the ETOS suit, you definitely want to get yourself that ETOS suit. It is super duper easy to uh, work on the, well, make, make the firmware on your radio up to date. Really, Eversky has done that uh, very well. Or the ETOS uh, developers, are they part of uh, Eversky? I don't really know. Oh well, okay, so with the ETOS suit running, you start the radio. And uh, you don't have that uh, ELRS module in the radio yet. Simply start your radio. Welcome to Ethos. Actually, then you hook up the USB cable to that radio. So simply plug it in at the top. And then pick Ethos suit, uh, the middle option in the menu. Boom. Okie dokie, uh, on your computer uh, a couple of uh, folders will be opened. You don't need to use those uh, as of yet. Close those. And uh, then in the ETOS suit you can see that uh, ETOS suit has actually recognized uh, the radio. In my case the X20 HD. And in the ETOS screen you can check if all the firmwares are up to date. So Every checkbox uh, at the end of the, each line should say up to date. And if that's not true, then you can update the firmware with this arrow over here, this darker arrow. And that's it. Um, yeah, once you've uh, clicked that and uh, have had a couple of reboots, uh, your radio should be up to date and have the latest ETOS firmware and uh, bootloader firmware and um, co component firmware for your uh, RF. So with that out of the way, we'll actually have to add some scripts for ELRS to the radio, just like on uh, OpenTX radios. Okay, and those scripts can be found on GitHub and uh, in the ETOS feedback community, as you can see here. Uh, now don't worry, there's a link in the description of this video to this specific page. And in case you were wondering uh, why these dates are as old as they are, six months old for instance for the Lua scripts, these scripts are basically nothing more than an in-between between, between uh, the firmware on the one hand and your module on the other hand. In, in your module, in your ELRS module or in your Crossfire module, there's already part of the well scripting at least the settings. All the possible settings for your module are in the module. The rest of the code is in ETOS uh, already. So these scripts don't have to be updated all that often. For instance, uh, if there's an uh, ELRS update, these scripts can remain the same. At least I haven't uh, found newer versions 
And also, I know that these work. I used them yesterday, so they, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As of the making of this video, these are, these will work. Okay, so on this page you'll find different things, but uh, what you are looking for is a Lua, this Lua folder. And in this Lua folder, if you click on it, you will see, uh, well, Crossfire. There are, are scripts for Crossfire here and ELRS and multi protocol modules and Servo, Snake, a game. And okay, so there's more here than we need. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna step back to the previous screen. Okay, so what I'll actually do is download this entire doc, uh, structure of documents. Just in case I need any other components from this uh, document later on. And to download the entire thing, you simply click on code over here and then download the zip. Which will, surprise, surprise, download this entire structure in a zip fo format to your computer. Very, very simple. All right, I've got me that zip file here and I've opened it and in that zip file there's basically one folder and if you open that you can see again that structure that uh, was uh, on the page we previously looked at. And again, uh, the Lua folder is what we are after. Here is, well, in this case, the ELRS folder is what we want. But if you want to add Crossfire functionality to your radio, you do the same with that Crossfire folder. Okay, at this point, we want to switch on our radio again. Welcome to Ethos. And again, hook up that USB cable. And let's see, um, we want to hit ETHOS suit again. Even though we won't be using the ETHOS suit, we need the folders. Now, uh, on our computer, uh, we uh, again uh, have two new folders uh, open. And uh, one has uh, bitmaps and uh, fonts on it. We don't need that one, so close that one. The other one is uh, the USB drive in your radio. Now, uh, let's have a look. Uh, in this folder, we do not see a scripts folder. And we do need a scripts folder. So, we will actually add a new folder and call it add scripts. Uh, doesn't uh, matter much if it's capitals or not, I think, but um, well, I've uh, not gone with uh, capitals and this works, right? Okay, so scripts, new folder, and we actually enter into that folder, which is obviously empty. And in this folder, we drag that ELRS folder from the zip file, which we downloaded, right? So we copy that. And again, if you also want to add Crossfire functionality to your radio, you can go ahead and put that Crossfire folder in there as well. And who knows, maybe you want to add a multi-protocol module to your radio. Then you also take and put that multi-folder multi into your scripts folder. And that is basically uh, everything you need to add to the radio. Those will have the scripts, again, as an intermediate, a translation, if you will, uh, in between ethos and your module. Alrighty, at this point we actually do want to add our module to the radio. And I've done that off screen because it's a tight fit. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be able to do that uh, with a camera in the way. Um, but it's also a perfect fit. It's a tight fit because this module is uh, aluminium, made of, out of aluminium, so it doesn't have any give. And uh, yeah, if you know these uh, micro module base, they have like fingers, tooth <laughs> in them to grab onto the module. And again, because this is an uh, aluminium module, it doesn't have any give compliance. So again, it's a tight fit, but also a perfect fit. And it's nice, nice and slim, right? So um, let's switch on the radio then. Welcome to Ethos. Now, 
Important to note that our module, there's an LED in the middle of this module, the module is actually not on now. So what gives? This definitely doesn't work, right? Uh, we have to configure our model, so the quadcopter we see here, the model, to actually use the module. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so we get into the model settings and then the RF system. Uh, right now, everything is switched off as you can tell. Internal module is off, external module is off. So, this is an external module. Click that, we switch it on, and then we have to pick which kind of module this is. Now, here comes the scripting, and uh, we don't have to uh, pick any scripting, but there's um, Express LRS over, over here. And that option wouldn't have been there if we hadn't put the scripts on, on, onto our radio. And uh, let's see, what more can we... Well, that's it. Now, if we have a look at our module, and it might not uh, show up on camera, it's a bit of a faint LED, but it's definitely on. It, it doesn't have a connection with a quad at the moment, but it's definitely switched the module on. Now we can actually configure and then hit setup our ELRS module. And all the settings you see here are basically the same things uh, that you see in um, OpenTX or HTX. It might look a little bit different. Mostly the color scheme actually and the controls uh, are a little bit different in ethos. But all the settings are there and you can, well, set up your ELRS module the way you want. You've got all the options you would have in HTX or in uh, OpenTX here. And I'm guessing that um, part of the scripting you've, we've copied onto the radio is uh, what makes this screen work. But it's simply, again, like I mentioned before, it pulls the, the options out of the module. So the options you see here, it takes from your module. If you add an, a different module to the radio, you'll see different options in this, in this screen here. And that is basically it. Yeah, you have to set up the, the model, of course, and obviously test things in beta, in the beta configuration uh, so basically, that's it. That's everything you need to do to add ELRS to Eversky ETOS radios. All right, I want to add two more things. In ELRS, you have to have channel 5 as your arming channel. That might catch you out. And it has to have an, uh, a digital kind of arming channel. So a two position switch and a high level must always be armed. Yeah. Basically, the ELRS protocol or the system depends on that, uh, ha having your uh, arming on channel 5. Okay, and the second thing I want to show you is uh, I've got uh, both of these X20s with an ELRS module here. However, as you can tell, this one is a lot bigger. And um, yeah, what I've had to do is remove this handle from the radio. That wouldn't have fit anymore. So yeah, that's a bit of a uh, downside. This is uh, a, a huge module, right? This is a Radio Master 1 watt module with a nice screen and such. But um, yeah, regrettably I've had to remove the handle to, ha <laughs> to make that work. Maybe with an, a different antenna. Yeah, with a different antenna it would have uh, worked. So maybe I'll simply uh, reposition that antenna to somewhere else. But uh, basically, actually, now that module acts as a stand for my radio. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, again, if you want to add a bigger module to these uh, tandem radios, you might want to have to, uh, well, remove the handle. And it's an easy job, right? It's a couple of screws. So uh, yeah. Oh, also, with the hand removed, I removed one of the 900 megahertz uh, antenna, right? But I don't use them, so no biggie for me. And I could still use the 900 uh, megahertz by adding an external antenna. So there's nothing really lost there. Oh, well. Okay, uh, I hope this video helped you out. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.